1 p.m. case, Leslie Helm, Scott Helm, and Robin Hugh, Chesapeake Shakespeare Company, trading is trade name pending, 7 South Calvert Street, Class BD7 Bear Wine and Liquor License, application and transfer ownership and location of a Class BD7 BWL license, presently located at 300 East Saratoga Street to 7 South Calvert Street, and a request for live entertainment. Everybody testify on a piece of phone and raise your right hand. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I don't think you're Lisa Harris Jones. I'm not. I'm Scott Helm. All right, nice to see you, Mr. Good to Helm. see Ms. Harris Jones, I believe, is in Annapolis today. You're sort of in the um, place where a lawyer might be. You're dressed well, so and they, they, you look like they could be your client. Uh, the way there's the, of the three of us, the lawyer standing here is to my far right. Aha, uh -huh. you've got a lawyer in hiding. In, all right, indeed. Well, you've all got your mic, so let's we get do. started. All right. Um, you are Leslie Helm, yes. even though you're separated here from your yes. sibling. Or we, your, we are married. You are you're, Big brother, yeah, <laughs> and any of that. Um, Leslie Helm, and you're Robin Huff? How? Yes. Oh, sorry, thank you very much. All right, we're here uh, on the transfer of ownership and location to 7 South Calvert Street. Um, tell me what the Chesapeake Shakespeare Company wants to do, and I'll allow you, sure. Mr. Helm. Thank you. Uh, commissioners, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, I've given you all a brief presentation, which I do not propose to go through page by page, but I'll hit the high points, mm -hmm. and we'd be happy to take questions. The Chesapeake Shakespeare Company, and it's covered on page two a little bit, is an 11-year-old organization that has been mounting productions of Shakespeare and other classic plays. Uh, last year, the Chesapeake Shakespeare Company served over 12,000 patrons, mostly in Howard County. The signature event is an outdoor summer a production uh, in the ruins of an old girls' school called the Patapsco Female Institute. We have been looking for an indoor location for five or six years. About two years ago, we were fortunate enough to purchase the historic Mercantile Safe Deposit and Trust Company building located at Redwood and Calvert Street. We have been engaged since that time in the conversion of the building into a live theater venue. Our primary business purpose will be to stage productions of Shakespeare and other classic plays. We anticipate doing about 100 performances a year. The capacity is about 250 people, so we anticipate as many as 25,000 patrons a year indoors. We will continue to perform in the summer in Howard County, um, so that will be unchanged. Uh, the ability to serve beer and wine at the concession stands is an important ancillary service we provide to our customers. Um, they already are used to that at outdoors in the picnic grounds at the Tapsco Female Institute, and we'd like to be able to do that as well with the performances, which is why we're trying to acquire and transfer a license. All right, but right now you're, you're talking about getting a license to perform at the Mercantile Building, right? We'll be opening in September of 2014. Okay. How much work is left to be done? I mean, obviously, this photo you had provided us, and what I'm marking is your first uh, exhibit, page five. Um, looks like renovations are well underway. Well underway. Uh, the groundbreaking was in July of last year. Uh, the construction started effectively August 1st. Substantial completion is scheduled for May 30th of this year, so we're about three months away from completion. I would describe the current status as all of the infrastructure being done, meaning uh, structural steel, meaning plumbing, meaning HVAC, and those sorts of things. We're basically at the fit and finishes furniture and fixture stage, and so we anticipate being done on schedule. All right. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a question. Thank you. On page seven in the upper left hand um, image, yep. the bottom right hand portion, there's an area that's designated storage. And then above that is family room. What I was looking for specifically, um, areas that could be rented out for weddings or any type of private event, if you were gonna be able to provide that and what your plan were, was to that extent. Sure, I, I think um, the answer is we are open to those types of events. Um, the 
most difficult thing is when you get down to the logistics of handling a building like this, when you're going to do 100 shows, plus you have uh, the stage that needs to be set up between shows, plus you have rehearsal time. Um, there are not that many opportunities, particularly weekends and, and evenings, uh, where the building will be unoccupied. I think that we are most likely to be able to make the building available to businesses and other organizations for conferences and things like that. There's the possibility we anticipate that we may be able to rent the building out from time to time for live musical events. People sit and listen to live music. But mostly it'll be a theater for our performances. Thank you. In this theater of performance, how does it look in real life? Can you have a drink and have a young person sitting beside you? I mean, give me the setup. Yeah. How I mean, it, it is um, roughly 250 seats on three levels. Um, we do have um, minor patrons uh, in the building, or we anticipate we will. Um, so it is possible that somebody could be sitting there with a drink uh, in their seats, which we anticipate allowing, and have a minor um, next to them. Uh, we don't anticipate that anywhere near, uh, you know, a large proportion of our attendees will be minors, but that is a possibility. So how do you guard against a minor being passed a drink by someone who's of age? Well, what we will do is have um, event house management staff. And it will be their responsibility to supervise that. I think, by and large, I'd be shocked if our patrons will do that, but I acknowledge that as a possibility, and that'll be house management staff's responsibility to supervise. Have you seen this type of setup before? Well, it, it happens at our outdoor events now. We've never had a problem with minors consuming alcohol. Children almost always attend in company of their parents, and so their parents are generally um, next to them. Right. I, was, I was talking about in the rare cases where you have a 21-year-old driving and you have a 19-year-old with you and you go on to this. Is this a hot destination for young teenagers and early 20-somethings on a Friday night? Probably not. We hope so, but we acknowledge that it is and so, um, generally, young people tend to come with their parents. Our, our average audience age is in the 40s, which is 15 years younger than the average theater audience because we do have children. Uh, we like to say that kids come and they bring their parents. Um, but the fact is that, yes, our average age is meaningfully above the drinking age. Certainly. The bar could be making a comeback with the young ones. So. We're hoping so. Right. Mr. Helm, we have a question about your application. Sure. A couple um, of them. Chairman. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Uh, first of all, um, we were hoping we could get more specific information on who would be the full-time operator of the establishment. We, we, you put down Chesapeake Shakespeare Company. Right. Um, are, have you hired a general manager? I mean, I saw someone yep. had signed as a GM. Well, um, the, the, the building is technically owned by an entity called Modern Globe Theater Holdings, mm -hmm. which uh, I am the general manager of. It is owned by a private family foundation, which is my private family foundation. It is leased to the Chesapeake Shakespeare Company for 21 years. Um, so substantially, the Chesapeake Shakespeare Company stands in the position of owner of the building, though legally they don't. The operator of all of the events will be the Chesapeake Shakespeare Company. The two senior executives of Chesapeake Shakespeare are my wife, Leslie Malin, who's the managing director, and a gentleman by the name of Ian Gallinar, who is the artistic, the founding artistic director and has been part. So all of the employees of the organization report to them and are managed by them. All right, though we don't have to have a person designated yet based on your, the, the point you are at in, in the build out. We do need to know before you open who your, who your manager will be. Okay. So when you do designate a full-time manager of the establishment, we'll need you to amend your application. I mean, you can do that by letter. It doesn't have to be physically on the application, but that's the first thing that we'll need once you do designate a said employee. Okay. The other question is regarding the purchase price. Our application form uh, asks for both the purchase price of the business and the cost of the real property. Right. Uh, some people fill it out differently. Right. And I don't know if you had an attorney's help. I don't know if you had Ms. Harris-Jones help on this or not. No. But everybody does it a little bit differently. We right. just want to make sure we understand it. Sure. The cost, uh, our staff says that the cost of the license and real property has not been submitted. I'm assuming that you did actually yeah. You, you did tell us the cost of the license and the real property, but I think we're actually looking for the cost of the license 
Yeah, then separately, the cost. What I see here is $1.25 million plus renovation costs of approximately $4 million, Correct. paid in full, no balance due Correct. to Mr. Piscatelli, 200 East Redwood Street, LLC. Yes. The so you so look, just for so it's clear right here on the record. Yep. Um, it was a one point two five million dollar purchase price for the building. Correct. And that included the liquor license. It did not. The liquor license was bought independently from a different uh, party oh yeah. for forty five thousand dollars. All right. So what we're going to need you to do, and we'll we'll need you to disclose the name of the person. I mean, it's, it's not that it's a big secret. It's obviously being sold from here. I don't have it in front of me. I don't know whose liquor license it is. But we're going to need you to amend um, Section 5, page 2 of the applicant's interview form, indicating the purchase price. When it says purchase price for business, of business, I'll ask that you put down the cost of the liquor license in that. There's also it says down payment, terms due, and payee, uh, and then owner of real property. And that, that should be self-explanatory at this time. And then whether there's any rental fee or terms of lease. So you, as far as I know, unless the staff directs you otherwise, I would just put put down everything you just told me about the liquor license okay. in section five. So we now understand that you bought the real property and you bought the license. So before you leave, make sure that that's clear on there with our staff. I'm not sure. I know the location. Um, the seller is represented by a broker. And I do not know that I know the name of the principal who holds that. Uh, I will no, make right. phone, I will make. Should, okay. Yeah, Direct. Okay, perfect. If we're letting him transfer, we'll, we'll know who it's coming I, I would have expected you would know more. The, the, the broker was a little sensitive. I think he had some sense that I would try to cut him out. Don't know why. Sure. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think of a Shakespeare reference, but it's just not happening. After lunch. <laughs> oh, man. Where's Mel? You got one? When you need him. Come on, Mel. Uh, yeah. <laughs> sure. No. Good, good wine makes good welcome. Yeah. Very well. That should hang above the door here. All right. Thank you. Thank we're, you. Anything else, commissioners? Nothing. All right. We're going to go off the... All right, we'll go off the record, <laughs> and we will go to our decision phase. Oh, no, going back on the record, hearing phase. Our due diligence check shows that uh, Chesapeake Shakespeare Company is uh, a corporation in good standing. Exactly. We also forgot uh, Agent Mark Fosler, making sure we can have this hearing today. Tell us about the posting, Agent. Uh, Chairman Agent Fossler, uh, posting was made by Agent Howard on uh, the 10th of February. Remained posted and last checked on the 20th of February. All right, thank you very much. So. All right, we're, uh, Board of Elections has verified for us that Michael Sullivan of 101 South Linwood, Jane Coffey of Rosebank Avenue, and John McCann of Belmont Road are registered voters. A check of State Department and assessments and taxation shows <coughs> that those three individuals are listed as owners of the real property that they've represented on their voter application. So, we're good to go. We'll go off the record. We'll go to the decision phase for February 27, 2014. Leslie Helm, Scott Helm, and Robin Howe. Chesapeake uh, Shakespeare Company, 7 South Calvert, and this is the transfer from East Saratoga to 7 South Calvert. Live entertainment requested. We didn't spend a lot of time talking about live entertainment because it's pretty self-explanatory in this case. Um, Mr. Helm did most of the talking. He's a private investor, and it, he submitted to us a business plan uh, and prospectus, eight pages in length, showing uh, layouts, showing quotes from uh, individuals such as Mr. Embry of the Abel Foundation, who um, appears to be supporting the project. A, quotation from Mr. Fowler of Downtown Partnership, uh, there's several pieces of meaningful information contained in this exhibit, including uh, the project details showing uh, $6 million in cost, the $1.337 million building acquisition, the $4 million renovation, and other soft costs, showing breakdown of the source of funds, showing where the money's really coming from. So maybe this is one of the more transparent things you'll ever see. I mean, you Hope know so. that... You know the Helm Foundation is, is putting three million into the project. You know Abel's putting in a quarter million. Some other great investors, even the city of Baltimore, in for two hundred thousand. The city for one hundred and twenty-five thousand, and other pledges to follow. So, the board then received, as if Kirby Fowler's quotation on this beautiful photo wasn't enough. We got a letter from Kate Daly from Economic Development and out Business Outreach with Downtown Baltimore Partnership in support of the transfer. And based on all that, 
we will determine that under 2B10202A, there's a public need and desire for this request. There's a de minimis impact on the other bars and restaurants and liquor licensees in the area. Certainly the most uniqueness services or products that you might want to, that, that could be offered, something very new and different for Baltimore. And certainly uh, no problems with health, safety, and welfare of the community, no issues with crime, traffic, or parking. So we'll go ahead and approve uh, this transfer today and the request for live entertainment and wish you the very, very best of luck. Thank, thank you, you very much. Mr. Chairman, we thank you. Thank you. Commissioner uh -huh. thank you. We're off the record.